In fact, what Jesus accomplished at the end of the Gospels was ignited by the Holy Spirit's coming in Acts chapter 2. But later, at the end of Acts chapter 2, it says that the Lord added to their number daily. <laughs> daily. Okay? And that's happening here at Friends. I don't know if you know this or not, but we have new folks who show up every week. Every week. Okay? For those of you that were here a year ago, these are the days you prayed for. These are the days you hung in there for. These are the days you fought for and dreamed about. Because I promise you that if you had to go around this room and name people that were here, you would know half. Because half of these people are new in the last year. That's a great thing. Most churches can't say that in America. And it's because God is up to something here. But what worked for the early church is what will work for us. And that's being authentic. This pastor is not perfect. That pastor might be close. This, per this pastor is not perfect. Well, I'll talk to Mary later. <laughs> This pastor's not perfect, and I'm not going to stand up here ever and tell you that I've got it all together, because I don't. And I think we've got a group of people that are just regular, everyday, ordinary folks. And our mission isn't to be perfect in this life. Our mission is to follow Christ and to be obedient what He's asked us to be. And that's what's attractive to people, is we're not playing games here. This isn't a religion. This is about a relationship. And it's important for us to continue that transparency. And, and be truthfully being humble enough to admit that we're still in process. Because we're all broken. The investment that these people made changed not only the people in their community, but I want you to think about this. Had it not been for these people in Acts 2, you and I wouldn't be here. 2,000 years later, what they did is still paying off. And now it's paying off in terms of millions and billions of people around the world because they were willing to make that sacrifice. But some of the stuff that that when there's a payoff, they didn't get to see this. And some of the things that we're doing, we're not going to get to see either because the people that we touch, we'll never hear back from. We, we support missionaries around the country and they're reaching people that will never hear that story. But you know what? That's okay. Right? See, you don't, you don't see what happens in the academy Monday to Friday because you're not in the building. I am. And I walk through the building and I see little kids run up and hug me and hey PT and high five and I hear from the parents and, and I hear them thanking me and I get emails from parents and grandparents saying thank you for your ministry. You don't see those things, but I do. You don't see what happens with Ralph and the karate group on Mondays and Thursday nights, but I do. And I have conversations with these young men and these young girls and we have people from the church who participate in that group. And I, and I hear what's going on there. Some of you are a part of Monday night in the prayer meeting those of you that don't come, you don't know what happens in that room, but I can tell you it's unique and it's special. And you should be there if you can. But some of the stuff that we do, you'll never hear about. And some of the stuff, none of us will ever hear about. There are many, many unknown and unseen stories. Because some of our youth will go off to become ministers or missionaries somewhere else. And they'll continue to touch people all because of the impact that we had on their lives. We've decided we're going to invest in our homes, and that's a good thing. I think God's honored by that. Being the kind of person who's going to take care of our house, take care of our resources, that's a good thing. It's a good thing to invest in our family. It's a good thing to invest in our church. Those things are all good things. But we have to invest in our community. We have to. It's not about us huddling up anymore. It's about us looking for the people that aren't here yet. And the decisions that we make about ministry and about the way we're going to give and the way we're going to be involved as volunteers, and it's not about us. It's about the people that aren't here yet. It's about the people who are yet to discover what it is that we've stumbled upon here. We might not ever see what happens, but that can't stop us from trying. It can't stop us from trying. What we want to be able to say is, at least we tried. And when you try, you always want to try your very best. Because if you tried your very best and you got a C, that's okay. Yeah. But if you didn't try at all and you got a B, that's not good. Because you could have made an A. <coughs> we have to invest. And it's time for us to do that. We've talked about this for five weeks. Five Sundays. And it's time for you and I to put our name on the line. The rubber meets the road. Pick your favorite Say, it's time. It's go time. Pick one. In the seat in front of you, every other seat, there should be a card. Looks something like this.
Those of you that are on the back, it's actually stuck into the seat back or where you're sitting. Card has two sides because we do that here. We can print two sides there. This side, all it measures is what our tithe potential is for the year. Okay? And what we're going to ask you to fill on that side is whatever you in your household generates, if you gave 10%, what would that number be? What would that number be? Because remember, our goal is to get toward health. My family will fill that in, just like your family fills them in. Okay? That's tied potential. And what we're trying to figure out is, on a scale of 1 to 100%, where are we in terms of our health as a church? Because what we want to reach is our potential in all areas of ministry, not just our children and youth and worship. <coughs> be people that also uh, become healthy with regard to our stewardship. This week, how many of you saw the article in the Sentinel this week about all the churches that are having all the big money problems? How many of you read there? There were churches that were $700,000 short, $500,000 had to come out of their budget. Okay, Our whole budget for this year is $225,000. And I want to just tell you what I, my perspective. Pastor Sharon and I know of churches in this town. There's a very large church in town that said in the article had to have $350,000 in the month of December above regular giving just to be able to stay afloat. There's another church that I that's in town has to have something like $60,000 a month to pay the interest on their mortgage. That they're $13, $17 million, something like that in, in the hole. Sixty grand a month to pay the interest. Now you tell me where you're going to have money to go minister to people. That's a lot of dough. Okay? And I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. The day, this is my opinion, please don't tell anybody this except it'll be on YouTube. <laughs> the day of the mega church is over. It's already begun to happen. And what will happen is a lot of churches the size of ours are going to get swallowed up by the bigger church. That happens because the smaller church cannot provide some of the programs that the larger church can. But what the larger church generally cannot provide without great effort on the part of the person is the connectedness that we feel here. And the connectedness is what the people want. And so what's going to happen is people are going to be going to the church or the first church of the refrigerator or whatever it's called. And they're going to go there. And what they're going to hear all year this year is we know the economy's bad. We know this. We know that. But we, you have got to give us more money. Otherwise, we're going to have to start cutting this, 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 and this. And people will be encouraged to give out of obligation or out of guilt as opposed to out of joy. And so what's going to happen is they're going to walk into a church like this. And they're going to say, what's the deal financially, preacher? And I'm going to tell them. And they're going to go, oh, so you're a healthy congregation. And this environment is going to be a lot more conducive to more people than the large church that's in debt. See, the big church, eventually, the tail wags the dog. It always happens. Eventually, in a big church, it's about nickels and noses. Okay? It's about butts and bucks. How many butts in the seat? How many bucks in the blade? That's eventually what it's about. Okay? And so the goal of friends is to become a church, a smaller church, so to speak, two to four hundred people. And instead of being a church of twelve hundred, we're going to plant two more churches of four hundred. And we'll be three churches of four hundred instead of one church of twelve hundred. And that's the way that's the way the growth happens, and it's healthy and it's more stable. And people aren't indebted, they don't have a ball and chain around their neck trying to do ministry. That's the plan. Okay, and if that excites you, hallelujah, praise God. And if it doesn't, get on board, it'll excite you in the end. <laughs> the other side. The other side of the card is for you and your family as you make a commitment to what you think that you'll be able to do this year. Now, don't fill that out just yet. I don't want you to fill it out yet because I want you to, I've got something I want you to see in here. Now, you say, well, why do I need to do that? Well, here's why. We have our budget set at $225,000. If what we get is we can only give X number of dollars and it comes out a total of $150,000, then we need to make some adjustments. But if it comes back at $350,000, it can allow us to have some sense of peace knowing that we're going to be able to do the things that we feel God wants us to do. That's why that's on there. Okay? And the other thing is, this is between you and God. Okay? I'm not going to hunt you down for $12. bucks. we are not doing that. Okay? But you need to sign that.